Hey, what's up, friends? Daniel Santiago here with another drive time message. You know, today I was been thinking about uh, kind of reminiscing on my life and when I became a uh, a believer in Jesus and when my faith really started to develop. You know, I had a I was in a period of life where I was doing odd jobs and really working at, uh, I was actually working at a restaurant uh, here in Phoenix as a, as a trainer, and I would train new um, new servers, new waiters who would come in to the restaurant and just, you know, teach them on the way that things should be done, and interestingly enough, I had a, um, I had a person come in and invite me in a time in my life when I was really... Uh, Struggling. I mean, I had an inner turmoil. This person had recognized in me that uh, even though my outward appearance was, you know, I always had a smile on my face and I loved people and I, you know, was a great person, they knew that something was just a little bit off in me and ended up taking a leap of faith and actually inviting me to church. And at that point in my life, I had really tried everything. I had, I was in a situation where I just moved to Arizona. I had uh, just left a pretty long-term relationship. And in that, I had lost my job. I actually lost my part-time job and my full-time job. I had to withdraw from school, uh, broken relationships, relocation to a brand new place where I knew nobody. And I was in a position where I... Uh, internally devoted all my time, all my energy into uh, working and, you know, training up other people and through that I really had just escaped my my deep inner pain and uh, anyways, so the story goes on, I ended up saying yes to, to church and just going over to church and, and um the first time I ever went to church, I didn't go to church growing up at all. Um, and I know my grandfather was Catholic, my, my mom uh, the same growing up, and really, you know, we really never, ever went to church. And even throughout my whole high school experience, uh, I went to church once and I saw somebody flopping on the floor, and it was, it was just a really crazy experience for me. And I, was, I, I had some resistance and some reservations, but... Uh, needless to say, I showed up that one day, and, um, you know, I, I took a little bit of faith, and I ended up going and, and listening to a, uh, a pastor give a, uh, a message, and the message was about the prodigal son. It comes out of Luke, the book of Luke, uh, chapter 15, and, um, you know, it's a story of a son who takes all of his possession and goes and lives in uh, a crazy wild life, just parties, hangs out with prostitutes, just getting drunk, spends all his loot gambling, uh, ends up finding himself in a position where he's just broke, he's he's uh, working as a slave, he's feeding pigs, and you know he realizes, man, if I could just go back home to be with my father, you know, I would be so much better off than where I'm at now. So he. You know, something happens in himself, and he gets uh, he gets the uh, he gets the courage up really to to go back and apologize to his father, and works out this whole big story, and you know, really says, you know, oh God, I've sinned against heaven, and you know, against you, and I sh don't, you know, I don't belong here, and you know, just hired me as a servant, and you know what, his dad doesn't really listen to any of that he basically says to his son you know son i love you i'm so glad you're home says to his hired servant say you know go get a robe uh to put on him go give him a ring give him some sandals and uh and let's throw a huge party and for me when i was in listening to this story for the very first time i really resonated with the prodigal son because that was really my life you know i I, uh, after I left high school in Virginia, I went to uh, back to L.A. where I grew up and uh, worked on Sunset Strip and hung out with, you know, the scene. You know, it was partying, the drinking, the, the drugs, the entertainers, the, 
you know, the musicians, the, the, the everything you see on TV, I was pretty much in the heart of it, and felt like that story really resonated to me because I really was the prodigal son. And I remember going to service and listening to the story and being so convicted and so comforted at the same time. Yet surrounding myself, uh, looking around at all these people who were, uh, you know, churchgoers, I really struggled with the fact that I didn't fit in. You know, I wasn't like them. I didn't understand the Bible, I didn't understand church, I didn't, I didn't grow up singing songs and, you know, raising hands and all this stuff, and so, needless to say, I remember what it was like being so uncomfortable going to church, but I knew that that was right where I was supposed to be, that um, I remember it vividly. After uh, the third time I went, I really stepped out of... Um, stepped out of the service and, and just kind of prayed, silent in myself, and I actually just kind of wrestled with God and said, yeah, you know, I really don't think I can hang out with these people. I mean, they're so not like me. They're so uh, rigid and so reserved, and everything that was right to me is wrong, and, you know, I feel like I'm judged, and, you know, and I don't know if I can do it. And by the time I could finish that last sentence, I don't know if I could do it. Somebody approached me and welcomed me back into the service. And it, it was a, a great experience for me because that day forward, I really started to transition my mindset, transition my behaviors, my friends, the things that I did, the things that I valued. And everything started to work in me by the power of the Holy Spirit, which God gives you when you come to know and and accept and embrace who Jesus is and what he did and, and the power of the cross. And I mean, there's just so much stuff that I can't even share with you right now. But the point that I'm trying to make is, the, and the whole reason why I'm sharing this story is this morning I got a, um, I, I was seeing somebody's uh, status on Facebook actually. And it said simply, hey, haven't been to church in a long time. Does anybody know of a good church? And so, you know, I shot back my little comment and who knows if they'll ever show up but you know what people are hungry for truth and people are hungry for authenticity and people are hungry for love and compassion and for people to seek to understand where they're coming from and give them some practical strategies and how they can improve their life improve their emotional state of affairs maybe their finances but you know what I can tell you this is that God's book the Bible has answers to every single situation humanity can throw at it. Whether you're a skeptic, whether you're an atheist, whether you have been hurt by people of the church, whatever the situation is, there's a solution to it in this book. And it's just so powerful because regardless of if you grew up in church, there are times and there are people who come into your life to help you move through whatever it is you're going through. Sometimes they may not be who you expect them to be and most of the time they happen when you least expect it so the point of my drive time message today really comes to the simple fact that sometimes when you don't know what to do when you feel down and you have to find yourself in a new environment maybe that's at church maybe it's a place you haven't been to in a really long time one of the things I would encourage you to do is just take a leap of faith, walk by faith, and give God a chance. Unlock the door to your heart and let God in. And let the people who are passionate about God and who are actually working to show you grace and to show you love and to really be a reflection of who God is ask God to bring those people into your life and you know what you'll be amazed at what will happen when you say God I need your help I don't know if I can do this I really don't know if I can be comfortable or learn to be comfortable in this environment I got issues I got problems I got things that I've done that you know I really I really regret I really am 
struggling with right now. But you know what? Like Steve Harvey says, don't trip. Don't trip. Because he ain't through with me yet. He ain't through with me yet. So my encouragement to you is just love on somebody. Love on somebody unconditionally. Show them grace. Move with compassion. And through your ability and your willingness to be available, God will use you. And you just might be the person who I was, who desires to know the truth, who desires reconciliation, who desires to have peace of mind and find yourself face to face with the story that resonates with your heart and you feel the power and the love of the, of the Holy Spirit of God working in your life. And over time, you find joy, you find healing, you find peace and you'll find it through God's people as He moves through them. So till then, take care of yourself. Have a great day, and we'll catch you soon.